Hi boys and girls, it's Mrs. Gloom and I'm going to be reading a book today called Lemon the Duck, written by Laura Backman, illustrated by Lawrence Clayett Merle. Richard was the first to hear the soft peeping sounds. Then the rest of the class heard it too. It was coming from the incubator in Miss Lake's class. For 28 days, the machine had carefully warmed and turned the eggs. Now the children could hear the ducklings peeping inside the eggs, as if to say, I'm ready to come out. The students had been studying oviparous animals' egg layers. The ducklings worked and rested and worked some more until finally they burst out of the eggs. There lay four ducklings, small and wet, squeaking softly. The children squealed with glee. All day, Miss Slake's students watched in wonder as the four newborns became dry, frisky, peeping balls of fluff. The children named them Peaches, Lemon, Daisy, and Chip Chip. It soon became clear that Lemon, named for her soft yellow down that reminded Miss Lake of her grandmother's lemon meringue pie, was different. She had a tuft of white on her head, but that wasn't the only thing that set her apart. Miss Lake, what's wrong with Lemon? Myra asked. She doesn't stand like the others. She doesn't stretch out her neck. Miss Lake called Dr. Bill, the vet. Lemon may need a little more time to get her land legs, Dr. Bill said. Over the next few weeks, the ducklings were fed and loved by Miss Lake's class. Soon, white pin feathers began to poke out all over the duck's soft down. They were growing up. Little webbed feet slapped against the floor as the ducklings waddled and flapped and followed the children around the room. But Lemon still could not stand or walk. Every time she tried, she tumbled over. Miss Lake decided to take Lemon to the vet. What your duck has, Dr. Bill explained, is a balance problem. Not much can be done for this, he said sadly. You can help her get stronger, but she'll always need extra special care. When the other three ducks were old enough, they went to live on Mr. Webb's farm. Miss Lake adopted Lemon and brought her to school every day. Mrs. Lake and her students did just what the vet ordered. They gave Lemon extra special care. Before school each morning, Miss Lake placed Lemon in a baby stroller and took her for walks around the neighborhood. As the sky loomed above her, Lemon stretched her neck out to get a better look. She watched the birds flitter from tree to tree or perch on a wire. When Miss Lake and Lemon got closer to the river, Lemon wagged her tail feathers at the sight of water. Lemon loved her nightly bath. She strengthened her muscles while she swam in the tub. Her waterproof feather trapped air like a built-in floaty and her bones were hollow and light. This made her a natural swimmer. Miss Lake often took Lemon to see her feathered siblings at the farm. Peaches, Daisy, and Chip Chip would waddle over to Lemon and quack a friendly greeting, but they would quickly lose interest in Lemon because she couldn't muck around in the grass, like all ducks love to do. At school, the children took turns carrying Lemon in a basket. They fed her by hand and gave her oodles of love. Lemon would bark loudly as they left for lunch, and when they returned, she'd quack excitedly as if to say, Welcome back! At recess, Lemon snoozed on the grass as the students surrounded her with treats. Each of the children's bottoms would be in the air as they searched in the grass or under rocks and logs for worms to give Lemon. Nathaniel showed the others how to feed her. Hold the worm by Lemon's tail, he'd instruct. Miss Lake says Lemon needs to practice touching her oil gland so she can get stronger and waterproof herself. It will keep her dry in the water. One day, during circle time, Richard asked, Miss Lake, how can we help Lemon stand up? Maybe we can all think of some ideas, she replied. The next day, Leo brought in balloons from his sister's birthday party. Miss Lake carefully tied each, of, each end to a towel and made a sling to hold Lemon up. But Lemon was too heavy, and she popped the balloons with her beak. How do you get a duck to stand up? asked Leo. Day after day, the students tried new ideas, but nothing worked. Then one weekend, when Holly was helping her parents clean the garage, she spotted the live vest. 
they had once used for their dog when they were on a boat trip. Hmm, she thought to herself as she got an idea. On Monday morning, Holly brought the vest into school and whispered something in Miss Lake's ear. Miss Lake then slid Lemon's legs through the holes in the doggy vest, zipped it up, and grasped the straps as she let the duck's feet touch the floor. Lemon then let out a boisterous quack. Everyone stopped what they were doing to see what the noise was all about. Lemon standing up, yelled Myra. It was true. When the children ha held the handles of the vest, they could help her stand and walk. When it was time for Lemon to eat, or when she was hanging out at recess or on the rug in the classroom, the vest was attached to a stand so that Lemon could move around on her own. Lemon was one happy duck. She craned her neck to see everything happening around her. She mucked around in the grass, like all ducks love to do. She was able to find her own worms at recess. She threw out her chest and quacked as if to say, look at me. Richard's look of happiness turned to one of worry. Miss Lake, does this mean that Lemon will leave us and go live on Mr. Webb's farm? She will stay here, and we will love her and keep her healthy and safe, Miss Lake reassured the students. Lemon will always need us. I think we need her too, Nathaniel said. Just then, Holly ran to Miss Lake and whispered another idea. The next day at recess, Richard was the first to hear the chorus of quacking. Then the rest of the class heard it too. Mr. Webb had brought Peaches, Daisy, and Chip Chip to school for a visit. The three ducks waddled over to Lemon, who stood proudly in the sling designed by her friends. There the four ducks stood together, looking for treats and mucking around in the grass, like all ducks love to do. The students watched, happy to know that now their extra special friend with extra special needs could be part of both flocks, and they wouldn't have to say goodbye. The End